I thought to follow up a little bit this morning on that uh, topic of the courage. That was the theme of the dance yesterday. <clears throat> and let me just see if that's working, yes. And I found a, a book that I have actually on courage. And this, uh, this book is from Osho. He's a mystic with a bit of a sharp tongue. It looks like this. <clears throat> it's, it's in German, this one. Mut is uh, called courage. And the undertitle I really love is called Live Wildly and Dangerously. Right? Courage, live wildly and dangerously. So, and we explored a little bit yesterday this kind of polarity of fear and courage. Because, of course, when we get more courageous, the fear will also be a companion with it. Because somehow when he says live wildly and dangerously is an invitation to explore these areas that are unknown for us. To dare to do something that you maybe never done. And of course, if, for example, I'm addressing a conflict, I'm telling a friend, listen, I don't like da 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 da, -da whatever. Of course, that brings up fear and somehow it feels dangerous. And then we need the courage to do it anyways. Like Evangelos said that yesterday, you know, that he said to feel the fear and then do the step anyways. So somehow we are living in a time also now that a lot of fear, collective fears coming in, what's gonna happen with the economy, with our health, with humanity. And then somehow <clears throat> to have the invitation to live with courage and in that way dangerously anyways, to say, okay, I take on this challenge and I do the necessary steps anyways. And a necessary step can be what we're doing right now is looking inside and meditating and discovering who else could I be? What else wants to live more in me? What can I bring from lockdown into my everyday life that could be of value for myself and for the world? <clears throat> and <clears throat> in that book, it says in a, in a nice pas passage, it says, when you're going on the research path, like I spoke of yesterday a little bit, if you're really on a strong spiritual research path and you look deeper into your nature, then you might come into a phase of void, of not knowing anymore who you are. And I always say this is a good place to be because somehow realizing the old you has fallen off, you have somehow all of a sudden woken up, hey, this is, this is not me anymore, or, or this is not all I am. And you come in a state of void, and they call this, the mystics call this the dark night of the soul. Yeah, the dark night of the soul. It can also feel a little bit like a depression, you know, like just in this dark space, not knowing who am I? And then it needs courage to stay on the path anyways and not going back to the old self or like now back to the old me, how I used to be in the world. But to say, I'm just staying interested in this void, in this dark night, in this not knowing, and I'm just opening up to it, curious of what can I find? And then out of this unknown, out of this dark, the new you will be born. 
And if you resign too fast, if this fear, this darkness is too overwhelming for you, or you don't know how to be with it, you might just go back to the old you. So really to know part of this path of self-realization, part of this path to find out who I truly am, part of that is the void, is the unknown, is this what they call the dark night of the soul. And then to just make space in you to stay with that and to just walk through. And as far as I see it in the spiritual, you know, traditions or spiritual schools, often we talk a lot about these bliss states, the, you know, the waking up and the breakthrough and a pulsation. And, but we don't really speak about what we have to face on it also, because that is also included. The very uncomfortable states. But those states are just transit, transitory states. And it somehow is a test for all of us. Do we have the courage? And there we are again. Do we have the courage to just stay with it all? Yeah, to like this little Buddha here, he's just here all the time watching me. And sometimes he might think, but what is she doing now? You know, I'm just being. And in that way, the Buddhas, the statues, they're a good reminder for us. What is it all about? It's about staying rooted in yourself and just be here and, and, and observe. Oh, wow, now dark night. Wow, bliss. Okay, I'm just staying here and going deeper. And this needs some courage. And I really want to follow up on that dance and on that subject to encourage you. Also, when we have now our last meeting for this weekend, that as you go on, and of course, there will be other beautiful things next week, also in Mandali, meditation, Qigong, yoga, so you can support yourself. But also, if you go by yourself a little bit, that you just manifest this courage to walk through we all go through these dark phases and these unsure phases. <clears throat> but if we want to make a jump, if we want to make a new, live a new paradigm, if we want to create a new world, we have to jump. We cannot somehow jump in the river of truth and uh, meditation and fluidity and on the other hand, hold ourselves a little bit on a tree, you know, like, yeah, I want to go with the flow, but just this little security, right? I mean, I tried for a long time. <laughs> it's just kind of tearing you, yeah. So sometimes to do little or big jumps can be really, really um, valuable. Because in my experience, <clears throat> And it took me a long time to, to make big jumps. Well, I did big jumps when I used to be a snowboarder, a snowboard competitor. But on a, on a, a consciousness, <clears throat> consciousness path, it took me a while. But then when I did the jumps, the reward was so much. Existence was almost like shouting back at me, yes, we support you. And of course, I cannot tell you to do that, but I just encourage you to do these little or big jumps that you can, or even tiny little steps, and then listen to existence, because existence is supporting these acts of consciousness. And I'm sure you will get some kind of gratitude back. You might also get a clap into the face from time to time, but both are valuable. So to not, like when you're on the path and you say, okay, I'm now on the research path of who I truly am. And then you come into a place of void, not to give up. Or you get a clap into your face. Your friend is not responding like you would like to and you put it so nicely. Not to give up, to just say, okay, I'm learning as I'm walking, but I'm staying on track. 
Because as I say, I think in every meeting, the world needs each and one of us, each and every one of us. If we want to create a better world, it needs you to wake up. So I would like to um, finish this little Sunday talk and introduction by a little quote from this book, and then we go into meditation. <clears throat> and let me see if I can find it. Get my glasses. So <clears throat> I'll translate it directly into English from German. So forgive me if it's not totally correct. So this one is about meditation and courage. Meditation is just the courage to be still and alone. Slowly and progressively, you learn to feel a new quality in you, a new aliveness a new beauty, a new intelligence, which is not borrowed from others, but which grows within you. She doesn't root, uh, she, she's rooted in your existence. And if you're not a coward, she will blossom and carry fruits. <clears throat> 